Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're checking out the brand new PowerColor RX 6700 XT Hellhound. Now, technically this isn't a new graphics card. We did briefly look at the Hellhound in our day one Radeon RX 6700 XT review. However, this spectral white version, this is new. And since I didn't really give the Hellhound a detailed review, and it does look to be one of the better or perhaps even the best 6700 XT, I thought it would be worth checking out this new special white version. So what's changed here? Well, basically it's white. That's what's new. The original model featured a black fan shroud, IO bracket, PCB and backplate, whereas the spectral white version has a white fan shroud, IO bracket, PCB and backplate. Simple enough really, but I have to say the attention to detail here is quite impressive as white versions of graphics cards often come with a black PCB, but here just about everything has been given the white out treatment. That makes the Hellhound Spectral White quite a rare product. White graphics cards are already very difficult to find, but I'm unaware of any current generation graphics cards that feature an all white design. So why are white graphics cards so rare? After all, many of your favorite computer cases are available in white, like the Corsair 5000D Airflow, for example, that I recently built our Z590 test system in. There's a reasonable number of white power supplies to pick from as well, though I'm unaware of any recently released all-white motherboards. The closest you'll get is something like the Gigabyte Vision D, for example. So again, why are white graphics cards so rare? The obvious reason being that they just don't sell as well as black graphics cards. Black is viewed as more of a neutral shade, and these days gamers who care about looks dress up their system using RGB lighting. Still, white can be more desirable for those who like to show off their system, as the lighter shade better reflects light, and therefore makes for a much more impressive display. There is another reason though why graphics card makers tend to avoid white and just go for darker colours and shades, and the reason is yellowing. Unfortunately, for a number of reasons, keeping painted white products white is extremely difficult and near impossible without ongoing maintenance. I won't delve too far into the science behind why this happens as there are a number of very complex reasons which can vary depending on the paint used and the material that is being painted, whether that be plastics or alloys in the case of a graphics card. The main reason though for the yellowing effect you often see with white painted products is due to the presence of chromophores. A chromophore is the part of a molecule responsible for its colour, and they're produced as oil-based paint dries, and they're a natural part of the process. These chromophores are sensitive to light and they will be bleached out of the paint film if exposed to daylight. Now, some alkaline enamel paints discolour more than others depending on the type of vegetable oil blend that is present in the formula. However, all alkaline enamel paints can be expected to develop a yellow tone as time passes, especially in the absence of daylight. This means if you took a white graphics card and sat it on your desk near a window and you left it there, the top side of the card would remain white, basically indefinitely, assuming no pollutants are introduced like smoke from cigarettes, for example. The underside of the card though, so the back plate, will likely go off color, turning yellowish as the chromophores haven't yet bleached out by the natural sunlight. So this helps explain why case makers are a little more willing to sell white versions of their products, while graphics card makers tend to avoid them. A computer case is more likely to be subjected to light, whereas a graphics card that is installed inside the computer case isn't. So having to deal with warranty claims for off-white graphics cards is probably something board partners are trying to avoid, and that's why almost all of them are black. So, I guess you're wondering, has PowerColor done anything special to try and avoid the aging process that typically sees white painted products turn that dreaded yellowish colour over time? Well, I asked them, they didn't really get back to me with an answer though, so that means the answer is likely no. How long this yellowing process will take to occur with the Hellhound Spectral White will depend on the quality of the plastic used on the fan shroud and then the quality of the paint used. But based on all the research I've done, at some point this card will go off-white if not exposed to enough light. Anyway, that's probably way more than what you wanted to hear about chromophores, so let's move on and take a closer look at the Hellhound. We'll tear it down and then run some benchmarks. Design-wise, the Hellhound is a pretty simple looking graphics card. It's basically a rectangle with some embedded translucent fans. That's not to say the plastic fan shroud doesn't look good. It certainly looks very clean and I do like the chrome rings around the fans. Now there are three fans in total and the outer two fans measure 100 millimeters in diameter while the centrally located fan is slightly smaller at 90 millimeters in diameter. 
The fans feature dual bearings and a fan stop type technology that sees them idle when the GPU is below 60 degrees Celsius. Now moving around to the back side of the card, we find a full size aluminium backplate with a cutout towards the end of the card to help with airflow. Of course, the backplate is white. Again, it looks very clean with the only detail being a gray Hellhound decal and branding. It's quite a thick backplate, so it will help to strengthen the PCB, though unfortunately Power Color hasn't used any thermal pads, which would see it act as a heat spreader for the rear side of the card. Then moving around to the white I.O. bracket, there's a single HDMI 2.1 output and three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs. Okay, so it's time to pull the card apart for a better look at the cooling and PCB design. First up, we'll take a look at the cooler and it weighs 785 grams. So it is quite a big, heavy cooler. In total, there are five six millimeter nickel plated copper heat pipes, all of which extend into the right bank of fins, while just two extend onto the left bank above the copper base plate. The copper base is used to extract heat from the GPU, while a separate aluminum plate contacts the GDR6 memory and VRM power stages. Then over on the very white PCB, we find an 8 plus 2 phase VRM using on semi 55 amp power stages, which is a very basic configuration for a 6700 XT graphics card. For example, the AMD reference model features a 9 plus 2 phase VRM using Vache 50 amp power stages. Then finally, feeding power into the card are a pair of 8 pin PCIe power connectors. Now in terms of clock specifications, the Hellhound Spectral White runs at the same frequencies as the original version, and that means it boosts to 2581 MHz, which is the default AMD specification. And as you'd expect, the memory has been left stock at 16 gigabits per second. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. And for this one, I'm testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 5950X GPU test rig with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used. And for this one, we have just a few select games to look at. First up, we have the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results. And I've removed any other competing GPUs from these graphs to make it as clear as possible just how little difference in performance there is between these various 6700XT graphics cards. In short, we're looking at up to a 3% variation performance between the fastest and slowest 6700 XT tested, and that amounts to 3 FPS, so a negligible difference. Now, because the Hellhound Spectral White follows the AMD default clock specifications, the performance is no different to that of the reference model. But again, that hardly matters given that the fastest models are just 3% faster. And it's not just Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're also seeing little to no performance difference between the various 6700 XT graphics cards in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Here up to just a 2% performance difference can be seen. The last game we're going to look at is Watch Dogs Legion. And again, we're looking at no more than a 3% difference between the fastest and slowest 6700 XT tested. So in other words, it really doesn't matter which one of these cards you buy when it comes to FPS performance. And as expected, they're also very similar when it comes to power consumption, though here we are seeing up to an 11% disparity in the results, with the MSI Gaming X model using the most amount of power at 236 watts. In comparison, the Hellhound Spectral White averaged 214 watts in our test, which is actually less than that of the AMD reference model, so this is certainly one of the more efficient 6700 XTs. It was also a 1.5% decrease from the original model. Okay, so here's a look at the stock or out of the box operating temperatures with the card installed inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D in a 21 degree room. The hotspot temperature of the Hellhound Spectral White is actually three degrees cooler than that of the original Hellhound model, despite featuring the exact same cooler. I did ask Power Color if any optimizations or changes have been made to the cooler or the firmware for this version, and it sounded like the answer was no, but it's also unclear if any changes have been made to the VBIOS. After all, the original Hellhound that we looked at was a very early review sample, so they have had a bit of time to tweak things further. The fan speed was increased by 100 RPM, and while that is a fairly small increase, we are talking about a 10% boost in revolutions per minute. All of that said, 3 degrees certainly isn't a big difference, and silicon quality can also help account for a change in a few degrees. Other than that, our controlled testing remains the same, so there should be no more than a degree margin of error there. Anyway, regardless of which result you look at, the Hellhound is one of the very best performing 6700 XTs out of the box, and of course we will look at noise normalized testing in a moment. We're also looking at a very similar difference for the edge temperature, just a 2 degree difference between the two Hellhound models, and an edge temperature of just 56 degrees makes the Hellhound Spectral White one of the very best 6700 XTs that we've tested. 
Now, if we take another look at the hotspot temperature, but this time with all graphics cards, noise normalized to 40 decibels, we find that the Hellhound Spectral White is two degrees cooler than the original model. So that extra 100 RPM fan speed was only accounting for about a degree improvement seen from the previous out of the box testing. Again, it's difficult to say exactly what this two degree difference is down to. Is it due to a variance in silicon quality or possibly changes made to the VBIOS or perhaps both? In any case, two degrees isn't a big difference and either version of the Hellhound is very impressive in this testing, matching models such as the ASUS ROG Strix, PowerColor's own Red Devil and Sapphire's Nitro Plus. We're also only looking at a two degree difference between the Hellhound models for the edge temperature when noise normalized. And again, that meant the Hellhound Spectral White was seen matching premium models such as the Sapphire Nitro Plus, ASUS ROG Strix and PowerColor's own Red Devil. So there you have it. If you're after a current generation Radeon graphics card in white, well, the PowerColor RX 6700 XT Hellhound Spectral White is it. As in, that's it. It's your only option. And thankfully, with that being the case, it is an excellent quality product. Of course, finding one in stock at the moment at a reasonable price is gonna be difficult, but I don't need to explain the situation to you guys. You're no doubt aware at this point, so let's just leave it at that. Ideally, the original version of the Hellhound that we looked at on the day one review, that should be priced very near to the MSRP, and it's unclear how much of a premium this white version will fetch, but you can expect it to be more expensive. There's really not much more that needs to be said here. The Hellhound Spectral White is white, and if that's what you're after, then it'll probably look great. But more importantly, at least in my opinion, it works very well. As a side note, how well the white paint will age over time is a bit of an unknown, so keep that in mind. But beyond that, it's a great product as far as I can tell. If you like this review, then be sure to give it a like. You can also subscribe for more content. Not sure how many more 6700 XT reviews I'll be doing. Perhaps there'll be some more interesting models pop up, but for the moment, nothing planned, but we have a lot of other content coming up on the channel. There's some new graphics cards coming out soon, so we'll be sure to cover those. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. You can also support the channel directly via Floatplane or Patreon. Both of those will give you, or either of those, I should say, will give you access to stuff like monthly live streams with Tim and myself. We do Q and A's. We have an exclusive Discord server for Harbor and Box community members. Very cool place there to chat, ask questions, and just talk about tech. Uh, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there. Anyway, if you're interested, check it out. Links are in the video description, as I said. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.